All right, so we're back with another episode here. Just gonna be jumping into the character for the first time, and let's hop in here. So I'm pretty definitely excited to get this started. All right, we got all the tutorials here with the standard UI. I haven't played on standard UI for a little while now, so this will be interesting. But again, I don't know how much of this leveling process I'll show you. Again, I'll definitely show you if I add any add-ons. Right now we're playing with no add-ons, standard UI, everything just as it comes. But you know, I'll definitely show you if I add anything to here. But yeah, I'll check in every once in a while with the leveling. Won't show you every single level. Might be a bit tedious. Well, reaching level two is fast. There's like two quests. But look at all these spells we don't have yet. All that untapped potential. So it looks like some of my keybinds stayed across my characters here. So we're just going to go into key bindings and we're going to go to reset to default. And it's all default key bindings now. So I'll show you whenever I change those. But it's all default now. And for now, we just killed some Morlocks just to get some first aid kits. Running around, leveling up. Having fun. The first keybind I'm going to set here is auto run. I like to tab out of wow when I have to run for long distances. So we're going to go into key bindings, movement keys, and where it says toggle auto run. We're going to bind that to backslash and we're going to unbind the mouse button for key. I'm just really used to having auto run at backslash. I actually tried to do it, but it didn't work because it wasn't bound before. So there we go. Oh, now we get to tame our first beast. What should we choose? Uh, let's see here. What do we have? We got like a goat. We got a hawk and we have... Another goat? No, we got a porcupine. Uh, I think I want to go with a hawk here, so I'm going to tame the hawk. Yeah, let's get it. I'm going to name the hawk after one of my dogs. Going to name it Kenzie. Kenzie's black and white. This hawk's purely white, but my other dog, Bella, is only black, so this kind of makes a bit more sense. Kenzie it is. So now I got a few spells here. It almost fills up my main action bar. I will do some re-key binding now, so I don't really want keys six to nine and zero to be key bound. I only want one through five to be key bound as six to zero, it's pretty far away from my hands to reach. So I'm just gonna go in this key binding menu here and six is gonna turn into shift one, seven is gonna turn into shift two and so on. So I'll just keep replacing it with shift keys until we get to five there. And that's generally what I like to do. Just keep one to five and then fill the rest with shift one to five. For action button 11 and 12, it does become a bit different. I am using a Corsair Skimitar mouse, so I'm going to keybind some of my keys to that mouse as well. So action button 11, I am going to bind that to my mouse wheel, as that's what I'm used to having my interrupt on. So it's going to be just pushing down my mouse wheel for my interrupt once I do get my interrupt. And action 12, I usually have some kind of movement speed on there. That's going to go on my mouse button 11, as again, that's just what I'm used to having it on. And the mouse button 11 is bound to the period on the numpad there. And we're going to hit OK for now. So for this, I'm going to put my disengage on my mouse button 11. So once I press 11, there we go. I just go back for disengage. Now I'll reconfigure my abilities as I go and as I get more, but this is OK for now. Last right, so time we got level 10, we can finally pick up the survival spec. So we're just going to activate that here. And we start pumping a survival hunter. Here we go. I don't think we actually have a melee weapon yet, so we kind of have to wait for that first. But we're going to pump soon. And now we're going to get out of the XL's restarting area and into the real WoW world now. And I guess we're going to Stormwind first. Um, I've never completed this before. It was cool, but... Are you can get riding at level 10 now? It seems really early. Like, I already have 4.5 gold. This only costs 9 silver 50 copper. Damn. Let's see, level 10, 20, 30, 40. You can get the highest speed. That seems pretty quick, but I guess because the level squish, it's like that now. Oh, cool. Now we can ride mounts. One thing to note as well is I always have my percent as well as my actual health and resource displayed. So to do this, you can just go to game menu, interface, and to display. And for status text, you just click both and you can have both your percentage and the value on there. It's definitely handy to see exactly how much resource you have and health. So I guess I'm doing BFA storyline now. Maybe if you start with Exile's Reach, then you have to do BFA storyline. That's fine though. Leveling should go pretty quick, so it's not a big deal. But I did play BFA for pretty much every character to get to the max level, so would it be nice to do something else? That's okay. It really doesn't look like Hunter is set up to play survival early on at all. Like, I'm level 11 right now, and I still don't have a melee weapon at all. It only gave me ranged weapons, so it doesn't seem like they want us to play survival. Just reached level 15 here, so we get to choose our first row of talents here. And we got Viper's Venom, Terms of Engagement, or Alpha Predator. Um... We don't have a two-handed weapon yet, so we're not using Raptor Strike or a Harpoon, so that leaves Alpha Predator, which we'll go for now. I haven't done any research on what talents are actually best, but we'll just go for this for now. We'll change it later on if we have to. Along with this, we are getting a few more spells and abilities here, so I'm just going to open up the action bars. Just going to Interface and Action Bars here. I'm going to open up the bottom right, all the action bars here, and just so they're there. For when we get new abilities, we can add them onto there. And I'm going to start organizing my abilities kind of where I like them to be a little bit more. 
Also going to move the chat window just a bit, just resizing it. I like to put it down a bit, kind of right there. I think that's good. I also want to set up keybinds for my multi-action bar. So these other action bars apart from my main action bar. So for number one here, just this first slot, I am going to use my mouse buttons here. So that's just going to be mouse button one, which is bound to numpad one. And we're going to keep going with that. So one, two, three. And the next ones are just going to be four, five, and six. Easy peasy. So generally what I like to do, I like to have my main abilities on my action bar for buttons one to five and shift one to five. I'll have a few other main abilities on one, two, and three. And then the rest of the abilities on the buttons on my mouse will be for cooldowns for the most part. And we're going to keep going with seven, eight, and nine here. The goal is for us to eventually memorize all our keybinds. We're not going to be able to do that for a while as we're still obtaining spells and we're going to be obtaining spells until we hit max level. But eventually, hopefully we have everything memorized. 10, 11, 12, I'm not going to keybind to my mouse 10, 11, 12. Um, I did have disengage on 11 just all the way down here. So I'm going to save those for a different keybind there. I think the first one for 10, I'll go R and the next one shift R. I think the next one over just to complete this action bar will be T for now. And again, I'm just really moving spells where I like them to be. So I'll have my exhilaration on R. I'll have my other heal gift from Neru on shift R just to make it a bit easier. So I know my heals are on R and shift R. I'm also going to bind my mount to one of my mouse buttons, probably not one of the ones on the side, but I have two buttons on top just below the mouse wheel. So I'll bind my mount to the lower one of those two, just so I don't have to keep clicking the mount there. Makes it easier. I can just click it on, click it off. And level 15, after all this time, we finally have our first two-handed weapon so we can start playing survival properly, which is nice. So it takes that long to actually be able to properly play survival, which uh, that seems a bit ridiculous, but at least we have it now. I'll take it. Now that we have the melee weapon equipped, we don't really need Steady Shot and Arcane Shot on our bars right now. For now, we're just going to take them off. I just kind of rejig my abilities around a little bit. I'll probably switch it later on, but this is what it looks like for now. Level 20 now, I did get the option to choose a PvP talent. Uh, I'm not going to turn War Mode on, just because I want to stay in PvE only. But I just chose a random PvP talent, but I won't have access to it since I don't have War Mode on. We got Wildfire Bomb now too, which is nice. We didn't have any AoE before, but we can do some AoE damage now. It's pretty cool. So I'm level 22 now, and I totally forgot that I could get uh, upgraded riding. So I'm going to do that now, and it'll be 100% on the mount. We got level 25 here, so one more talent point we can spend. Guerrilla Tactics for increasing Wildfire Bomb damage, Hydra Bite for Serpent Sting, and Butchery replaces Carve. Uh, I think I'll go with Guerrilla Tactics right now, as we just really need single target damage. We're not pulling like huge or anything. So, Wildfire Bomb damage it is. Alright, just another leveling update here. So, we're now at level 40. We got a few more talent rows, so we chose Natural Mending just to get Exhilarations back faster. I uh, chose Bloodseeker for this row, is between that, Still Trap, and Murder of Crows. I figured Murder of Crows, the the ads probably wouldn't have lasted long enough to use that, so I went with Bloodseeker, and then post haste, just for the movement speed there. We're actually here just about to buy our flying, which will be pretty nice. We don't have enough for like the master riding, but we can definitely get expert riding. Also added a few more keybinds in the bottom right here. Shift T, C, and Shift C, Z, and then my last two mouse keybinds. And I have Shift 1 open. I think I have only one more spell that I need room for, and that's going to be Kill Shot. So once I have Kill Shot, I'm probably just going to put that in Shift 1. And these should be my keybinds for now. So how I kind of have my keybinds set up right now, I have most of my main abilities 1 to 5, and then Shift 1 to 5. I have my Interrupt on my middle mouse. I have Aspect of the Eagle on mouse button 11 here. And from these, mouse buttons 1, 2, 3. Those are my traps as well as my flare. Mouse buttons 4, 5, 6, that's my movement speed stuff, so Harpoon, Disengage, and then Ask with the Cheetah. Mouse button 7, 8, 9 has to do with my pet, Men Pet, Dismiss Pet, and Call Pet. R and Shift R are my heals. T, Aspect of the Turtle. Um, Shift T, I'll probably put like a Turtle Cancel Aura there. And then C is my damage cooldown, Coordinated Assault. These last ones, Z I use for my stun. I'm just used to having Z as stun for my previous characters. And then Trank Shot and Scare Beast are on mouse buttons 10 and 12, just to kind of fill those out there. Why am I going to kill these little things, dude? They're so cute. Look at them. I just hit level 50 here, just about to go into some Shadowlands content. I've pretty much just been questing around BFA so far. I did like most of the side quests and main quests of Dressfar and Tear Guard Sound. Um, did like half a song in Solemn Valley and again, just got 50 just now. My talents, I did switch to Murder of Crows on this row. Kept post haste here and flanking strike for 45. 
For level 50, I think I'll go with Wildfire Infusion right now. I'm not sure how strong Chakrams are. I might try them out, but I think I'll go Wildfire Infusion for now. And that's pretty cool. We're ready to get started with some Shadowland stuff, some current content. So let's head over there. We're just about to get into some of the Shadowlands content here, but before we do that, I do want to enable two add-ons here. And the first add-ons I will enable is Details, just showing our damage meter. I just want to know what spells are doing the most amount of damage right now, just so we can optimize our abilities. I'm also going to enable DBM as well, just so we have those boss timers in case we end up doing a dungeon soon. And for when we get into raid later on, it would already be enabled here. So just DBM and details for now. And we're going to reload UI just so those are enabled. I'm going to add another window here, as I usually like to have one window for damage done and another one for healing. And I'll place it probably in the bottom right corner here where I usually put it. And they are attached now. So when I move one, they both move here. And I'll just set this one to healing, this one damage done, and we're good to go. For DBM, I'm just going to leave it how it is right now. I'm not going to change anything. Maybe I will later on. But if you just leave DBM with how it comes, it should be okay. Then we get to the Maw now. So just to give you an idea of how long this took, we'll do a slash played and... So we've been playing this character for just over 15 hours now. Uh, I did have a bit of AFK time on the character, but not too much. So I think that would be pretty accurate. I only did questing, so I didn't do any dungeons or anything. So purely questing, 1 to 50 took me about 15 hours to get. I wasn't trying to go for speed or anything. I was just having fun leveling the character. You can definitely do it way faster than I did, but that's how long I took. So now I'm just going to progress through the Shadowlands storyline. I'll probably play the main story instead of doing the Threads of Fate option. I haven't really seen the cutscenes for myself. I just skipped through it on all my other characters that I did it on. So it'd be kind of nice to see the cutscenes. Just got out of the Maw here. So now we get to choose between replaying the storyline and playing the Threads of Fate, where you can pretty much just do world quests and dungeons and level up. I'm going to choose to replay the storyline, as again, I do want to see those cinematics. So here we go. So we play the storyline here. I'm also going to send my Hearthstone to Orbos here. And remember that we're not joining a guild, so we are stuck with that 30 minute Hearthstone. We can get the Enchant of the Bracers, which will lessen it by 5 minutes, but it will be quite a larger cooldown than if we were to be in a guild. Since this is a new character as well, we don't have a Garrison Hearthstone and we don't have a Dalaran Hearthstone, so just the regular Hearthstone is what we're stuck with for now. That makes getting around a bit more difficult, but it shouldn't be too bad. We'll probably stick in the Shadowlands for the most part. While I'm in Orbos here, I'll pick up a couple professions. The first one I'm going to get is enchanting, mainly for the disenchanting skill. So since it's a new character on a new realm, I'll need some sort of way to get gold for consumables and stuff for higher keys and ratings. So disenchanting is a great way to do that since you'll get the shards from it and you can sell that on the auction house for quite a bit of money usually. Not sure how much it goes on for on this server right now, but it's usually the easiest way to kind of get money. As you get that gear, you'll be able to disenchant it and sell it on the auction house. And the second profession we're going to get now is skinning, just so we're able to skin all the mobs that we kill to get that leather in case we want to take leather working later on. I'm not sure how much base legendary items cost in this realm either, but it might be too much for us to buy, so we might have to work towards crafting them. We'll see how it goes, but for now, we're going to roll with enchanting and skinning for our professions. Alright, so now we're on our way to Bastion, and get ready, it's about to be very, very bright. I feel like whenever you hit Bastion, it's just super bright. It's like someone shining a flashlight in your eyes or something. And it should be just in the bit here, just passing in between. But, yeah, I decided to go with the storyline, just to get- Oh, it's so bright, jeez. I decided to go with the storyline instead of the Threads of Fate option. I want to give the character kind of a first character feel to it. The Threads of Fate is more time efficient in terms of leveling and building up your renown, but again, I want to get that first character feel. I wanted to watch the cutscenes as well. I got my first piece of gear in Shadowlands, and it's item level 90, and I'm item level 55 overall, so I'm quite below the item level that it gives right now. Things haven't been too hard to kill, but it does seem I'm behind. Nice, we got our first epic upgrade. Item level 110, it's pretty good for our level. That's like a doubling our current gloves item level. Pretty cool. Just an update here. So I did Bastion, Maldraxxus, and we're just in Ardenweald now. Two of eight done. So we're just progressing through the storyline here. I just got Wild Spirits. I think this is the best Covenant ability. I've definitely seen a lot of Marksman Hunters use this, and it does a ton of damage. So we're going to try it out. See how much we can do here. And... See, it's doing yeah it's doing a lot as long as we keep it in the wild spirits that's a ton of damage we're getting in all right after i turn this quest in we'll be level 60 here and we'll go with the two-hand staff of course 
And there it is, level six. Oh, it upgraded to the epic as well. That's pretty cool. Level 60. So now we're good to go with all the max level stuff. We do need to finish off the campaign. We've got two more chapters to go. Shouldn't take too long there. But yeah, then we can start grinding out the gear, renown, starting dungeons, all that good stuff. Just going to equip that. That's a nice upgrade, the staff there. So hitting level 60, we are at 139 item level. Very low right now. As you can see, I move my unit frames around a little bit here. My target unit frame as well as my character unit frame are just below my character, just so I can see the health and resource right in the middle of the screen instead of having to look up at the top left. Uh, kind of got annoying having to do that. I'll keep these keybinds pretty much how they are for now right now. I might change things up a little bit. I did bind assist and passive to my pets, to my mouse as well, just so I can switch between them quickly there like that. But not too much else has changed right now. But yeah, definitely excited to get to this max level content, and let's just see my play time here. So it took one day, two hours, 39 minutes roughly to reach level 60. There's a bit of AFK time in there, but that's about how long it took from level 1 to level 60 here. And again, that's not with me going like super fast or anything. I was just casually doing it, just having fun while I'm leveling. So now it's time to pick my covenant here, and to do that, we're going to do a little bit of research. We do want to pick the best covenant that's optimal for survival hunter DPS, so we're going to look into it in a little bit, and I'll show you how I'm about to do that. So to choose the best covenant here, we're going to go on three places. We'll go on Raider IO, Warcraft Logs, and Wowhead. So we'll start on Raider IO. We'll see what the best covenant generally looks to be for survival hunter, and to do that, I went on Mythic Plus. I went Spec Leaderboards, Hunter and then survival, and we can see what covenant the top survival hunters are running, and it looks to be pretty dominantly Night Fae right now. There's a few Kyrian and Necrolord in there, but for the most part, almost all survival hunters seem to be going Night Fae at this high level of Mythic Plus. That seems like what we're going to go. And for Warcraft Logs, we can do the same thing if we select survival hunters, going survival here, and we can see their covenants just over here, and again, it looks to be pretty dominantly Night Fae, so Night Fae is definitely looking to be a Good choice for Mythic Plus and for rating currently. And just to solidify that as well, we're going to look at the guide on Wowhead to see what it says. And it does say that Night Fae is the best for raid as well as for Mythic Plus here, as it's great in both categories. As you can see, I don't like to rely just on one source. I like to look at different sources and see what the top players are playing and see what the guides are saying as well. You can definitely even branch out further to YouTube guides or guides on other websites too, just if you want some more confirmation on what would be the best covenant for you. But for our survival hunter here, it looks like it's going to be Night Fae. So I'm going to join Night Fae and we'll do that right now. Perfect. And that's probably mainly because of Wild Spirits because it does so much damage in AoE and a good chunk in single target as well. So we're now Night Fae. Cool. So that's where I'm going to end this episode here. That was about two weeks of playing, I think, in this episode. And our total playtime is one day, four hours, five minutes currently. We didn't get to do any dungeons, but we did have max level. Got to item level 142, and we set up our keys pretty well there. And we have a few keybinds left for those two covenant abilities we're about to get. So I think we're pretty well set up now to go into some max level content, get that covenant campaign going, get those Mythic Plus dungeons in. Hopefully we can get some good progress this week come to come here. As always, thank you so much for watching, everyone. Please let me know if there's anything in particular you'd like to see in this series. I'll definitely try to get it done. I'm going to try to have an episode of Surviving Pugs available every week. I'll try to release it sometime between Monday and Wednesday. I'll definitely aim for Mondays. And the gameplay, although this one was two weeks, it was just leveling. I thought two episodes of leveling wouldn't be that fun. So I'll try to aim to do one episode a week. The gameplay will be from Tuesday to Monday. So hopefully when we start doing those Mythic Plus caches, we can start the episodes off by seeing what we got in the vault there. Thanks again, y'all. I'll see y'all in the next one.